Have you ever attended a networking event, met a bunch of people, left with a stack of business cards, only to return back to your office and realize, man, I gotta put all of this data into my systems and my workflows. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate the entire thing. Simply snap a picture of that business card and let AI do this magic. And we're gonna get into it right now. All right, so let's take a look at this entire workflow, this entire automation. So the first thing we use, or the first program we use is a program called Slack. Slack is a free tool that'll will allow us to take a picture of the actual business card and allow it and pull it into our automation. Once, once the business card is pulled into the automation, after we take the picture, uh, we use uh, OpenAI's vision to, to analyze that photo of the business card. And then we extract all of that information from the business card. We throw it in some variables so we can use it later. And this is kind of where the magic begins to happen, right? So the first thing we want to do is we're going to take that contact or that business card, the information from the business card, and we're going to throw it into our contacts, right? So that, that, that way we have it that way we have that person electronically in our system, okay? Next, we're gonna use um, Anthropic Claw to then draft an email, and then we'll send an email uh, to that prospect as a follow-up after the meeting. And there's so much more we can do, which we'll get into later. Um, this entire workflow is going to be in my community. Um, so if you don't feel like building it yourself, you can just go ahead and jump into the community, download the blueprint, click on this button here, click on the more button, click on import, and this entire blueprint will be available to you, but don't worry about it. I'm going to go buy everything and I'm going to do everything and I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Okay. So let's do it right now. Wondering the program that I'm using to do all of this is called make.com. Make.com is an automation tool that allows you to um, bring in different software components and allow all those software programs to talk to each other, basically. So that's the program that I'm using and I'll put links below to every program that I'm using in the show notes. So you just have to click it and you can just uh, sign up for it. I'll make it free to use. So. Don't worry about that. Okay. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a trigger. And uh, as mentioned earlier, what we are using is a program called Slack. So if we click on this plus button here, let's look for Slack. Okay. And let's click on the Slack. So what we need to do is we need to watch for public channel messages. Okay. So this would trigger automatically. So anytime you put anything in the channel um, or anything, anytime you put anything in one of the Slack channels, it's going to automatically trigger this event. So now we need to create a channel, right? So let's jump over to Slack. Right now, let's jump over to Slack right here. Uh, this was a test that I did earlier, but let's start with from scratch. Um, Slack is the other program that we'll use and Slack is, is free to, to sign up with. And we we'll create a channel. So let's create a new channel. We're gonna create a new channel and uh, we'll call this AI network and follow up. And we're gonna call this demo. Okay, but this is our demo, All right? So we'll click next and it's gonna be public. And good. we got to um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to add any one of this in. Okay, they're done. Cool. So this is our this is our Slack channel. It's called the AI Network Follow-Up Demo. Okay. All right, so let's jump back over to Make now. And what we want to do is we want to, we want to um, pull up the channel. So let's say select from, let's select from list and go to public channel. We may have to refer, oh, we may have to refresh it here. Let's see. Yep, AI Network Follow-Up Demo. Click that. Two, two is the limit. Hit OK and hit okay boom all right so let's rename this module and we oops sorry i ran it but let's just oh we ran successfully which is good but let's uh let's rename this right click let's rename it you want to rename it to look for images let's give it a quick emoji let's see here my balls as we're looking hit okay let's hit save and what we want to do next is I'm going to snap a picture on my phone. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this here, but I have a picture of a business card. Um, this gentleman's name is Harry. I met him at a closing one time and we got to use him as a guinea pig. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to open up Slack on my phone and I'm going to pull up the channel. Let's see. Wait a second. Okay. Use photo and we'll upload it to the channel. All right, so sending it, it's sending the photo to the channel now. And let's go to Slack and let's see if it uploaded. But there it is. All right. <laughs> All right, so I uploaded this photo to the channel and it's Harry. He's a Bank of America um, Senior Wealth Management Lending Officer. Um, and it's gonna pull all this information, okay? So cool. So the way we can test this out here is if we click on the right, if you right click on the trigger and says and say this, um, choose where to start, I'm gonna choose manually, okay? and it should pull in that last one. So if we go to this object here, that's the that's the picture, hit okay. And we hit run once and it's gonna pull it in. All right, so it pulled it in. It showed that it was a file here and this is the file here, the image. 
and this is what we need. So everything's working good so far. Cool. All right. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to actually download that image to make, right? So we click on this again, click on Slack, and we want to say download a file. See, download a file. There it is right there. And the private URL download link, if we click here, we can get that download link, all right? So we just need to go to files and URL private download link. Slack like is pretty good. They labeled it both the same. Click on that, hit OK. And let's just rename this really quick. Let's rename it to download. Oops. Download, Im download image. OK, then let's get an emoji and let's give it this right here. OK. Let's hit save. And again, we can right click on this, uh, choose where to start. And we want to choose manually and we're going to select that image. Typically, you won't have to do this, but once once make already pulled the image in one time, it's not going to continue to do. It's not going to continue. It's looking for anything that anything new that comes in. So what I'm doing in this particular case is I'm specifying the image. But as you take pictures, it's automatically going to run this entire uh, workflow without you having to do anything. But for the demo, we want to select the image just so I don't, I don't have to take pictures every time in order to um, trigger this uh, workflow. OK, all right. So let's hit OK, hit run once and there it is. So pull the image and this is the image. So now the image is inside of is inside of uh, make. OK, so the next thing we need to do now is we need to analyze that image. Right. So right right now we just have an image and what we need to do, we need to use up AI in order to analyze the image. So what we're going to use is we are going to use open AI and what we're going to do is they have vision. So it analyzes the image. We click on that. OK. And the prompt, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Let me copy the prompt from the last animation here. We'll fill that in. All right, and we'll, let's read it together. Okay, let's say act as a document expert. You will be provided with an image of a business card. Please export the elements that are contained in the business card. And I, I specify what I wanted to pull. So first name, last name, company name, email address, mobile number. And I formatted it with the plus sign. This is like an international format that Outlook uses in order to import phone numbers. So um, for whatever, um, um, program you use, whether this kind of look at their documentation to see how they like the numbers formatted um, for the automation. And they usually have that within their um, API documentation, right? So um, additionally, I'm going to pull the street, the city, the state, the postal, uh, the postal code and the URL from any um, the website. And I, and I specify that it's in this format with the HTTP in front of it, um, because a lot of times the websites for space and for the real estate of the business card, they may not put the entire HTTP www. They may just put like, um, B of a.com or something like that. Right. So I wanted to pull the exact thing because this, again, this is a required format for Outlook in order for, for them to be able to pull in that variable. Okay. Um, lastly, I said your output should start with uh, open bracket and end bracket because I want it to be in JSON format. But a lot of times with uh, open AI, they will put it in JSON format, but they'll put wording in the, in the top and in the bottom of it. That kind of screws up the, the coding. So I wanted um, being very specific as to how I want the format um, or how I want the output rather. Okay. So that's what I included here. All right. So the image. We hit the plus image and it's it's the image file. Okay, we download the image from Slack and see I already pulled it from the last from the last um, module Slack. The model we are going to use is we go to use 40. We can use 40 mini. That's actually pretty good. And the max tokens. Let's just give it enough room to breathe. I'll give it 2,000 tokens. Okay. All right. <clears throat> let's hit OK. And let's just rename this. We are going to rename it to analyze image. And can we give it an emoji? Let's see. All right, I want to do yeah, this little guy here. It looks very sophisticated. All right, let's hit the save button. Uh, probably must not be empty. Oops, did I, did I miss something here? Let's see. Oh, maybe I didn't hit okay. That's why I didn't save it. All right, hit save. And again, we're going to right click on the trigger, uh, choose where to start, choose manually, and we're going to select that image again. Okay, that object. Hit okay. Awesome. Let's hit run once and let's see what happens. Open AI is analyzing the image and it's extracting information from that image and it should put it in the format that we specify. Okay. So let's give it a few minutes as it analyzes everything. All right, all done. Let's hit this plus sign here and let's see what it came up with. All right, this is the input we don't need. We need to look at the output with, with the results. Also, we hit on the results and good. Exactly. So pull the first name is Harry. Last name is Elbum. Elbum. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Sorry, Harry. All right. The next is the company name, email address, the phone number. I did a mobile and I did the office number. Um, an actual business card is actually a fax, but I'll just leave it as office number. Um, then we have the street, the city, the state, um, the postal code, and the website. And it formatted it with HTTP mortgage. Um, and if we actually let's look on the business card and see if it was if it changed the formatting a little bit. So let's go on the business card here. Let's take a look at it. Oh, so it was actually formatted with HTTP, but I've seen cases where it wasn't formatted that way. And actually, if I take you to my 
other testing when I did um, the other day. You see how the website here says rate.com with the slash, it didn't have the www, the w, HTTP colon four slash slash www. It didn't have that in front of it. So that's why I specified it. And so, all right, so let's go back to the demo. Awesome. So let's go here. We are good. So now that we have this, what we want to do next is we want to actually extract the variables. Okay. And the way we could extract the variables is if we use a, a built in tool that's within make called, um, parse the JSON, right? So if we type on JSON, it gives us some different options. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it a little bit. You can do a ton of things here, but what we want to do is we want to parse it. So be parsing and extracting the, the elements from the actual JSON which uh, OpenAI produced for us, okay? So we just need to click this and we just need to click on the results, right? Hit okay. And um, so we name this as well. We wanna say extract variables, All right? And it's gonna emoji just to keep the trend going. Um, let's see, what can I use? Break this, use that, cool, awesome. All right, let's save this, um, let's save anyway. So make, it doesn't like when you use like an, uh, a calculation type variable at the end. So we'll just skip this step and then we'll, we'll, we'll actually, no, I don't want to skip this step. Let's just try to run it anyway. Okay. Let's try to, oops, I forgot. We have to right click, click on choose where to start, choose manually. And you want to select the object, hit okay. It may give us a warning, but we'll just try to bypass that. Hit run once. It'll say the, the transformer should not be the last module in the, in the route. Say run anyway and let it run. Okay. This is like transformers and any type of calculation fields at the end of the module. Uh, but okay. So good. So we extracted the data. So now we have the first name, last name, company name, email address, phone numbers, and the format that we want. We have the street address. Um, we have the city, state, postal code, and the email. That's basically what you, what you need in any business card in order to add it to your contacts. Okay. Sorry. Simple. All right, cool. All right. So next what we want to do is this is where really the magic happened. You can use your imagination um, for this. For this uh, demo, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my contacts and I'm also going to send a follow-up email, right? Because this is, imagine that we had a networking event and we meet people and then we want to follow up after, right? Because it's all, the power is in the follow-up, okay? And a lot of people go to networking events and then they take those business, stack of business cards, throw it in the drawer and you never hear from them again. And that kind of defeats the purpose of going to a networking event, right? All right. So what we want to do first is we want to create a router because we're going to be doing multiple steps here. So a router, and then this allows us to break down our different flows. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add the contacts, right? So let's add the contacts. So I'm using again, um, Office 365 and we have a uh, contact, let's see, Microsoft. Microsoft, they have a calendar one and then they also have people. Uh, Microsoft 365 people, this is what we need. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a contact, okay? Oh, one thing I didn't mention is every, anytime you add a module, if it's the first time using Meek, uh, when you pull up the module and or if it's a new program, it's going to want to authenticate your, it's, it's going to want to add your credentials to that module. So for Outlook, for Slack, for um, OpenAI, they all going to have prompts in the beginning when you start, when you um, click them for the first time and uh, allow you to add your credentials. For me, obviously, I've already add, I've already done this step, but for you, you're going to have to uh, to do that, okay? Just to, just to let you know. All right, <clears throat> so the given name, that's first name, the surname is the last name, right? And I'm pulling, again, I'm pulling this from the extracted variables. And that's kind of the reason why I wanted to run it first because I wanted to pull those variables. All right. <clears throat> Next is email address. Uh, right. We click on the plus sign for the email address. The email address is, where is it? Email address. Awesome. And for the name, we are going to put the first name, last name. I want to do the first name and I want to put a space there. So if we click on this, uh, this text functions, we'll click on the space. You probably gonna put a space as well, but just to keep everything formatted correctly, we do that space and last name, right? Next, what we wanna do is we want to add in uh, the business phone numbers, right? So the business phone number, uh, let's see, actually, no, what I wanna do is I wanna actually do a mobile number. Yeah, so mobile number, it says telephone number, so 908 number, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assume that's a mobile number. He didn't specify if it was, but I'll put that as a mobile number. And, uh, See, for business phones, we could put the other office number here. And for the street address, all right, so let's go to the street. Let's go to city. Let's go to state. And let's go to postal code. And website, I believe it's under the short advanced settings. So this is where we can see advanced settings. One thing I could also add to the, to, one thing I could also add is a job title, but um, 
that's gonna be for a future module. So one thing we wanna do is add the company name, right? I didn't have that company name is Bank of America. And this is homepage is what the website is. So click on the website. Cool. So we've used all of the fields. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fields. Uh, one, two, three. That's first name, last name, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I use everything. Okay, perfect. So we hit okay. You can add other things as well. You can add other addresses, business business addresses. So if you find, depending on what kind of your demographic of clients that you meet at these networking events, you may want to just uh, add a different fields in there. Okay, is it okay? And let's just rename this real quick. We're going to want to rename this to add contacts. Add to contacts. Oops. Let's put a picture of an old Rolodex. Should be here somewhere. There we go. The old Rolodex. Some, some people not old enough to know what a Rolodex is, but I do. I remember a Rolodex. <laughs> All right, cool. Hit OK. Make sure we hit save because we don't lose that information. But if you ever want to change those variables, you just have to go back to the um, um, analyze the image and then you can just specify here exactly what you want. So you can we can put like title in here if you want. We can put, excuse me, or if, if what? Let's just do it right now. Let's do it together. So what we want to do is we can add title. All right. Um, and that, that'll just be another fill we add. And then once you do, once you run it again, we'll see that it uh, should hopefully uh, pull that information. Cool. Let's hit OK. And Speaking of which, let's just run it again. All right, let's hit save. Actually, I want to do one more step before I run it again. I want to actually add something back to the Slack channel. So just to give, if you're on the road and you're taking these pictures, just to get like confirmation, like some mental clarity that you, what you're doing is working. I want to send a message back to the Slack channel. Let's say, hey, we did this, this is working. I'm just going to confirm it for you. So what we're going to do is we want to post a response. Okay, so let me see, um, there's a lot of things going on. Let's just search for a post. Oops. Um, Post. Respond. Oh, I should start now. So we're going to create a message. Yep, we're going to create a message. And once we create the message, what we want to do next is we want to tie it back to that conversation that we had. Okay. So we want to do is we select from the list and the channel is a public channel. And then the channel is going to be this demo. Uh, yeah, network follow up demo. The text, um, let me just copy from here. Make it easier for us. So what we want to say is, uh, this is class everything. What we want to say is, well, uh, make it easier. Let's do it this way. Let's track the variables. We can say, um, we can say Harry's contact details were added to your contacts successfully. Okay. And the block is we want to choose the block that we um, part of the conversation block. So when we take the picture, we want to actually respond to that picture. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go to here and we want to look at blocks. So if we see two blocks and we want to see element one. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to actually continue the conversation thread. So if you say, say we take five pictures, right. And it'll respond to that picture, that specific picture. So that way you know that, Hey, um, Harry's contact was added successfully. Billy, Lisa's, it will go on and on and on, depending on how many uh, photos you've taken in the in the Slack channel. Okay, all right, cool. Hit OK. Uh, rename this module, and we're going to say post response. Post response. Hit OK. Awesome. Let's hit save, and now let's run this now. Okay. So if we right click on this, hit choose where to start, and then again we go to choose manually, and we are going to say object, hit OK, and let's run this. Awesome. This next time around, it should pull the title, right? And that'll be cool to have. Okay, cool. So the contact was added. All right, let's look here to see if the, the title was added. Um, title, yep, Senior Wealth Management Lending Officer, Vice President. Awesome. So let's do this here. Um, and let's go back to the Slack channel. Let's see what happens. So first thing, actually, let's do this first. Let's go Let's go to the contacts. I'm going to open up my contacts, and I'm going to search for Harry, right? It's Harry... Harry, um, E-L-P-A-U-M. Oh, sorry. Maybe it's taking a little while to refresh. Let me refresh my screen. Maybe it'll show up in a second. Because sometimes it may take a little bit to sync up. So let's see. All right, let's go here. Search for contacts. You know what? Also, it's probably not indexed yet too, but it shouldn't take that long. I don't have that many contacts. Harry, come on. Let's go here. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Search my name. H. 
Harry, Harry, where are you? <laughs> All right. Oh, it should be in here. Just, just give me some trauma, trouble now. There we go. Harry, there it is right there. Harry, hold on. I don't see him. There it is right here. Harry Allen Bomb. Boom, there it is. So everything was added. It added a work phone, Bank of America. Um, the address is added. Uh, where's the mobile number? Let's see the overview, maybe? I don't see them. Oh, there it is. The mobile number is here. So yeah, everything, is, everything, everything was added, which is cool. All right, cool. So now let's go back to the Slack channel and we'll see right here. Harry's contact details were added to your contacts successfully. Cool. All right. Awesome. So next thing we want to do is oh, next thing we want to do is we want to send a follow up message to Harry. Okay. Um, because when, when, whenever you meet somebody, it's all about the follow up. What we're going to do is whenever I'm communicating with a person, I always like to use um, Anthropic Claude. To me, Anthropic Claude has feels more human to me in their responses. So I like to use Anthropic Claude when I, when I um, communicate with people. And I like to use OpenAI whenever I do any compilations, as you see, when I analyze the image and the, the, the things like that, I like to use OpenAI. You can use, if you don't want to sign up for both OpenAI and Claude, you could just use either or for each. So you can use Claude to do the anal to analyzing if you just want to use Claude, or you can use OpenAI to do everything as well. But just for me, um, I have both. And uh, it, that's how it works for me. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's open up Anthropic Claude. All right, here it is. Sorry, my pit is a little slow. Um, Claude, Anthropic Claude. We are going to create a prompt, okay? So I'm gonna use the latest model, um, 3.5 Sonnet, which is the bomb, by the way. All right, 1,000, 1,000 is the max tokens. We're gonna to add a message. The role is going to be user and the content type is going to be text, okay? All right, so I'm gonna copy and paste the text and then we're gonna go through it together, okay? Here's, one second, all right. All right, so um, I'm that, let's see, promise just erase that. All right, so I met, let's see, first name is Harry. Last name is Elbon. So let's read it together, all right? So I said, uh, I recently met Harry at a networking event. I'll draft a short post networking event connected, connected email. I'm oh, sorry, draft a sh short post networking event connection email. Please remind the contact that I ran, and I run, sorry, a national notary signing service and would like to set up a Zoom discovery call and connect with them on LinkedIn. I left the URL for my Zoom and I use Apollo.io um, for, um, for my connections. That's my sales CRM and then um, LinkedIn. So I left a uh, link to my LinkedIn. All right. So I specified I'll put the body of the email only and I'll put it in HTML format. All right. So I'm going to tell you why I did that. So I want to put the body only because if you just tell any um, OpenAI or Anthropic or to just make an email, they're going to give you the subject line and give you everything that you need in order to in order to um, fulfill your request. But in this particular case, all I need is the body. I'm going to create my own subject line. You could have separated it and created a specific subject line and created uh, a body as well. But in this case, I'm only doing a um, subject line. And the reason I'm also outputting in HTML format is because that what that's what um, Outlook 365 like likes and it'll be formatted perfectly. Uh, same thing for like Google and other platforms, they'll all accept HTML. So that's usually the best, best practice to do. OK, all right, perfect. So that's what we need. And we hit OK. And let's just reset, not reset, sorry, um, rename. Let's rename this module. I'm going to call it a draft. Um, follow up. Email. Okay. Right. This emoji. And let's get this here. Awesome. Email emoji. Hit OK. Make sure we hit save. Um, to save on time, let's go to the next step. The next step, what we want to do next is we actually want to send the actual email, right? So we are going to open up Outlook. Or, uh, yep, Microsoft. And we are going to open up the Outlook, right? What I want to do in this case is I'm going to set up a create a draft, but you, by all means, you can just create the message and send, send a message right away. And that's probably what you should do. But in my particular case, I'm going to do a draft just so we can over, have an overview of it. Although I'm a thousand percent confident that it's going to be great, but I actually don't want to send an email to Harry. <laughs> okay. Um, not right now. All right. So I'm going to create a draft. Okay. And what we need to do is the subject line. The subject line I said, um, you know, pleasure. Mm -hmm. Um, pleasure meeting you, you at the recent event. Pleasure meeting you at the recent networking event. Or you can put whatever you like, right? Um, the body is going to be what we got from Anthropic Claude. This will be the text response here. Importance, uh, you can put low importance. The recipient, you want to say the email address of, if we just collapse everything, and let's go back to our extractive variables. 
uh, you want to get the email address. The email address for Harry is here. And then name, we'll put first name. And you want to put the last name. So let's just put a space just to keep everything clean and nice. Last name. And that should be it, right? The reply to, if you want to specify a reply to address, um, like say, for example, you had a, um, like no reply at your domain.com. You can put that here if you like, but it will automatically pull it out, pull it from the connection that you made with, um, outlook from what can make. Okay. Hit okay. Awesome. All right. So let's just rename this, rename this and let's call it email contact. And let's just use the emoji again, email address. All right. The same one time. I actually want to post the response on this as well. So I'm going to clone this module and I'm going to connect it right here. All right. So the response I want to do this time, okay, is I want to, uh, state that, um, um, let's see here. What are we going to say? Let's go back here. Let's say a follow-up email to Harry, right? Was sent successfully. So a follow-up email to Harry was sent successfully in the same block. And you're going to pull that block from here. So it'll continue the conversation. Okay. And we are good here. Let's hit save and let's run this puppy. Okay. So, um, let's see, let's just run it. Okay. And I'm curious about this because I'm wondering if it may, if it'll fail here, if the contact is here. So we'll find out together. Okay. Should hopefully run. So let's right click here. Let's go to choose where to start. Choose manually. Hit okay. And ready to go. Let's rock and roll. Oops. I didn't choose it. Uh, here we come. Sorry. Choose where to start. Choose manually. Oh, sorry. I chose this. Just choose, just choose the object. Hit okay. And let's run once again. Sure. This time. Perfect. All right. So I downloaded the image. It's now it's analyzing the image and extract the available variables. Why does it say not a valid source? Let's see what happened here. See, this is what I was talking about before. So. You see how the JSON, the, the JSON is here and here. That's not supposed to do that. He, although I specified exactly for exactly what to do, I think I know what the problem is. So when I added the title, let's just do this and try it one more time. It should work this time. Let's hit save. Right click. Go to the formatting issue on my, on my end. Choose where to start. Choose manually. And let's go here. Let's try it. Hit okay. Should work this time. All right. So. Now it's extracting the variables, analyzed it. There we go. All right, added the contact. Now Dr. Claude is doing it. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. So let's look at the email message, right? So here's the email message. It says, uh, Dear Harry, it was a pleasure meeting you at the recent networking event. I enjoyed our conversation and wanted to follow up to continue our discussion. As mentioned, I run a nationally, national notary citing service, and I believe that there may be some potential synergies between our businesses. I'd love to explore this further with you. Would you be available for a 30 minute Zoom? discovery call to discuss how we might be able to collaborate. You can schedule a time that works best for you using this link. So we'll put the link to it there. Additionally, I'd like to connect you. I'm oh, sorry. Additionally, I can't, can't see guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Additionally, I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn to stay in touch. You can find my profile here. Looking forward to speaking with you soon. Best regards, Aaron. Boom. Look at how, how great was that? Okay. So this is, a, this is something that we, we basically snapped the picture, added it to our contacts, automatically sent an email. Okay automatically sent the email to um, the person that we network with at this networking event. And it's all, all, all done through AI, right? So then if you go back to the Slack channel, it should also have sent a follow-up message saying, hey, a follow-up email to Harry was sent successfully. Good. And if I go to my draft folder, um, I have to open up my email. Let's see if I see it here. Look. Um, okay, mail. And let's go here. All right, so let's go to my drafts folder, drafts, right? And let's see, there it is right there. Look at it. So we got it right here. Boom, look at this. Harry, it was a pleasure meeting you. See, here's the body of the email in HTML format. So that's part of the reason why I like to do it in draft first. So what we can do is we can change the prompt so that it outputs the email only. All right, so let's, let's do that. So let's go back here and go here. And at this data, I'll put the body of the message only. I did specify that. So again, this, this is not perfect all the time. And that's part of the reason why I like to put things in drafts so that way I can go take a look at it and then I can send it off afterwards. But, all right. So, I mean, 
this to give you the gist of exactly what you can do of course you just play with the prompts play with this a little bit more and then this will be all done on autopilot another thing that you can do is you can start using your imagination as to what you want to do going forward or how you would like to respond to your to your prospects when you meet after you meet them at a networking event one thing that you can do is you can use twilio twilio is uh, what allow you to do like a text message so if you want a text message if you want to send a text message out to the prospect saying hey we just met at the networking event pleasure meeting you here's my cell phone number let's let's be sure to keep in touch you can do something like that with twilio and i'll include a link to the video on how to set up make an automation with twilio is similar to what we did here but what you would just do is click on this plus button and add an additional route so that way you can um continue um adding some um different steps okay um, i mentioned earlier that i use apollo.io as well um for my sales crm if you wanted to add uh, the contact to like a, a campaign so i will leave follow up with them in a month follow up them in a few a uh, week or whatever you set the threshold that you want and you can continue to follow up with that prospect over time so that way you nurture that prospect you can do that as well okay um if you don't use apollo.io you can also use companies like mailchimp for example um is another um another tool you can use and, and mailchimp is also connected here as well if you type in mailchimp they, they have a module here as well that you can create different campaigns uh and again i told you i use apollo oops apollo.io you can um create a cam different campaigns on apollo.io another one that i like what i thought of actually as um, i'm speaking is you can use um a program called thanks.io thanks.io is allows you to put like hand mailed um po uh, like a hand mail card or hand mail letter or thank you note or something like that that you want to physically send to somebody thanks that io has have a built-in api um that allows you to do this automatically okay so like say for example you want to send your prospects a thank you card thank you for you know spending five minutes with me at the networking event uh here's a five dollar uh, gift card that will that you can use to have your next cup of coffee or something like that if you want to kind of smooth them or you could send a letter you could send a, a postcard you could send a thank you note and this could all be done with thanks.io i'm not affiliated with thanks.io in any way but I, I think that it'll be a good tool if that's something that you like to do this would be good for like real estate agents like real estate agents somebody like you say for example you have a bunch of people a bunch of realtors that came to your open house then you can just grab all of those um those uh business cards snap them and then it automatically does all of these steps that we discussed earlier in addition it also um in addition, it'll also add, like, send, like, a postcard for them. Or, look, see, see this example with Remax. You can add a note card with a picture on it. So you basically set up all these templates in thanks.io, and then you can do it. You can send a letter. You can, I mean, you can go on and on and on if you want to send something physical to someone. Because nowadays, people don't really get physical things like that anymore because, you know, of the cost. But if you meet 20 people at a networking event, you can send 20 cards. It's not going to really cost you much, and it leaves an impact, all right? Because somebody, people tend not to like to throw physical things away, but an email, you can just throw it in a junk folder, you can delete all right so that's something else you can think about but i mean your imagination can go on and on and on and diff different things that you can do with this um let me just show you uh thanks that io see there it is right there thanks that i oops my bad come on thanks that io so thanks that io is here as well they just sent a four by six postcard i haven't set this up for myself yet but it's something that i plan on doing in the future so this is like the I mean the sky's the limit. You can whatever you can think of, whatever you can imagine, and whatever you want to be done automatically, you can you can do it for you. You know, AI definitely buys back your time. And that's super important to buy back your time, right? So instead of spending 30 minutes every for each business card to do all of these steps, you just snap a picture, set it and forget it, and it'll automatically do all of this for you. Hope that you learned something from this video. Um be sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. Till next time, be blessed. Peace.